Hello and welcome back to another Cisco video. This time talking about IP routing at a high level presented by RouteHub. In this video we're going to talk about some of the fundamentals and concepts of IP routing and some of its routing protocols. We also will show you some graphical examples to kind of help you understand really what IP routing is doing. So what is routing? Why is routing important? In this particular diagram here, you will see that we have two computers, one on one particular subnet or segment, and another computer on another segment. And between them is a series of routers. Now, why four? Why not two? It could be for a wide variety of reasons. Some of the most common reasons is for um, redundancy, for taking multiple paths if perhaps one of these routers should fail and including the ability for these routers to communicate for routing across the best possible path from one computer to the next. So what happens? So really what happens is, let's say for example, this computer here wants to talk to host B, which is here. That request via routing will eventually get to this router here. This computer's default gateway is local router. And the router is going to think to itself and say, Hmm, which way should I go to get to host B? Do I take path A, which is here, or path B? So this video is going to help to um, describe what the routers do in regards to their routing protocol and the algorithm to help them make that decision on which path to take from point A to point B. Here's another example of the same kind of picture but really more detailed with segments and IP addresses and more. Here we see that there are three particular subnets or networks. The first is where host A is connected to and, and the LAN connection for router A. They're on the network 192.168.1.0. The host ID for the router A is .1 and host A is .10. On the opposite side, router B's LAN interface and host B reside on a different subnet, 192.168.2.0. And between the two routers, router A and router B, they're on their own connection or interconnection, which we will consider as our WAN connection. And this will be on a slash 30 subnet, which means that it will allow us to use two usable IP addresses. This is recommended to conserve um, IP address space and not waste it, especially if there's only two nodes connected between each other. So in this example, host A here wants to communicate with host B. What really happens? Well, step number one, router A will first look to see how can it communicate with host B on his local subnet. Well, it's going to look at his local routing table and it's going to try to find a match for 192.168.2.0. And on a Windows computer, for example, if you go to your DOS prompt and type in route space print, that will display that computer's routing table. So that's what host A is looking at. It's looking at where does um, that network, does that exist in its routing table? If there is no match for host B subnet, it will route that to host A default gateway, which is router A. And this is manually configured on host A and its default gateway would be 192.168.1.1. Next, router A will look at its routing table just like what host A did for that destination subnet of 192.168.2.0. Router A and router B, let's say in this example, are both configured for a routing protocol that is called EIGRP. And let's say that router A is learning about the 192.168.2 network from router B. So therefore, to talk to that network, its next hop will be 10.1.1.2, which belongs to router B. Moving along, router B would then look at its routing table for that destination subnet. And it will see that it is directly connected. And when we say directly connected, that means that there is an interface on that router that is configured for that network. Hence, routing would route directly to that connected host of host B. So in a nutshell, that's what routing is really doing from point A to point B. 
troubleshooting. So troubleshooting routing is, um, it can be pretty difficult, but really there's not much, isn't, most routing issues are not complex. They're very straightforward. And these are the things that I usually do for troubleshooting routing issues. First, you need to understand how things should be routing. Maybe there are multiple routers connecting off of this segment here for host A subnet. Maybe there's multiple NIT cards connecting to a different network that should be talking to it across a different segment. Who knows? Understand how things should be routing normally. And then that would definitely be more useful of kind of working our way towards the destination to see what the problem is. The second thing, which is from my experience, has been more common well, than anything. And that is, well, we are human, we make mistakes. And one of the things is confirm that you have the correct IP information in terms of that you're configured, like for example, host A. Confirm that you have the correct IP address, the subnet mask, the default gateway. Same thing for host B. Confirm all of those details of the IP information. And the third thing, look at the routing tables. And that's what we talked about from one of the um, examples. And that is if, is, if this is a Windows computer and you're doing a route space print, look at the routing table and, and confirm does that network, for example, 182.168.2.0, it's not going somewhere else. That kind of goes back to understanding how things should be routing. Also, use some, some very good valuable tools, ping and trace routes. Trace routes are very good because if I trace route from host A to host B, it's going to tell me the exact path it's taking. So for example, my trace route should reflect the following. The first entry should say 192.168.1.1, the LAN interface from router A. The next will be 10.112, which is the WAN IP for router B, and then the ultimate destination of host B, which is 2.10. Very valuable, and if there are timeouts, assuming there's no firewalls filtering ICMP traffic, Maybe something is broken or misconfigured. Another thing is pings. So how I like to use pings is determine if you can um, access um, devices or nodes locally. For example, for, for host A, see, um, see if you can ping something locally, like maybe another computer that could be dot 11. Then you work your way up towards the destination. See if you can ping 1.1. .1. See if you can ping 10.111 and so on and so forth, and that can help you that if something's not pinging, it could be that maybe something is down, like there's a failure, or something's misconfigured. Routed and routing. So one of the things that you will learn in CCNA, or Networking 101, is this kind of understanding. What is the difference between a routed and a routing protocol? And it's very simple. A routed protocol would be something like IP, or IPX, or Apatol, in terms of legacy protocols. A routing protocol would be such as RIP, OSPF, or EIGRP. Routing can be configured in two different ways, statically or dynamically. Static routes are very simple to configure. Basically, you indicate what the destination network is, the mask, and the next hop of where that, um, that destination network 